I'm here to talk about a specific project of my practice, which is called the School of Narrative Dance. But talking about this, you will understand in general how my practice is focused on. The School of Narrative Dance was founded by me in 2013, and it, was, uh, it happened after a series of public uh, projects engaging a thousand of people thousands, sometimes even 20,000 people, the biggest project I did in my life, and I, I say to my mother, I will die after that, but I'm still here. And uh, um, uh, remembering how people feel when you leave the community you work with. So I, I was really interesting as a professor as I am, uh, about the didactic processes, but also to provide a platform that people can continue using even without my presence. So I've, I put in, in together a series of issues and topics I had in my mind, and I found the school, which... You have read that? I can go ahead? Okay. So... The School of Narrative Dance is not a dance school. <laughs> it's a storytelling school. It's completely based on storytelling. And dance is just one of the tools and the language we use, especially because the first project involved a lot of illiterate people or people with uh, not capable to... Um, uh, there's less less people, and there, there, are, there are a lot of illiterate people in our Western society, actually. And uh, also because uh, we are very much convinced that the body keeps the memory of who you are, your environment, your experience. Uh, I'm not good in that, but my choreographer could say, just looking at you, a lot of things just looking at how you move your body and how, how you walk, how you sit, how you, you behave physically into the space. So, uh, the school... <laughs> uh, ...worked in a lot of places around the world. It's a very successful pro pro project because it changed always. It's completely free of charge, it's nomadic, which means that probably we will never have a building, and we don't want, we don't want that, because we want to shape the school in terms of contents and also in the physical aspect, uh, depending on the community we work with. So we don't have previous topics we want to, to work with the people before to approach the communities, and uh, often we are invited by institutions like uh, uh, museum a lot, but uh, uh, recently also councils and so on. So, so far we went to over nine countries and until 2017 we are full of uh, invitation and commission and we are super happy about that. The model of this, uh, the, the... Can I go? Mm. It was so beautiful, the other... Oh. Okay. In Sweden, for instance, uh, making open call, uh, we, we have a very different strat uh, strategy of communication with the people. I uh, study a lot, I make documentation, living with the community for a while before to make a proposal, before to, to build and to run the School of Narrative Dance. So, before to, before to start. And uh, depending on the response of the people, uh, we shape the contents also that the school will, uh, will, will, uh, will work on. And uh, uh, there is a double uh, uh, way. Uh, for one part, the school is focused on our on providing a wide range of experience of storytelling. You don't need to have degrees to be a teacher of the, of the School of Narrative Dance, but we have also scholar and Nobel Prize candidate, which are uh, sometimes teachers of our school. Always we found the teachers and, of course, the students in the location, so we don't have 
even I have a, 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 a lot of assistants which are all uh, former participants of other works, uh, we don't bring our, we are not abusive, that's the most important uh, fact. We don't try to build the cultures and to, to establish a system where the artist has a role, which is, well, actually because I'm not tall, I couldn't do that, but I can come from above and uh, say to people what they have to do. The School of Narrative Dance is a clear example of horizontal system of education when the teacher is an activator of something and people can emancipate, students can emancipate themselves from the limit of the teacher. Actually, I feel my role as artist as an activator and I, I'm small and bad, so it, uh, it does mean that I don't have uh, uh, my part of egocentrism or authoriality. Of course I feel an author. Because I activate that, I put these people together, community very different from age, background, uh, en environment, previous experience, stories, memory, personal memory, collective memory. And in Sweden, for instance, we worked in Malmö, Gothenburg, and called Stockholm, and the people uh, uh, responded to our uh, call were mostly political activists so, and uh, Syrian refugees. So the lessons were led by these people, and the students made this kind of experience, then translated in, in a performance they made through uh, the different plays in the three uh, cities. And the final outcome, even I hate this word because for me it's the entire process, the work, not just the final, what we, we call the final outcome, but uh, uh, the format we chose was uh, a film. Sometimes we make things for radio, even using dance as tools. Sometimes I may, we made the performance uh, in theater, other times parade, like tonight, well, this evening, at half past ten, at, be, at cross Riva de Martiri and Via Garibaldi. And yesterday I invited you to join, and you will ask me, you're crazy, we don't know what we have to do during this parade, no? Because there are dancers, all no professional, there are musicians, all no professional, there are a lot of people from Venice and abroad, and what can I do? You will discover it if you come. People will react to your presence in, in the parade. It could be very interesting to feel their adrenaline and how their interaction with you. Oh no! <laughs> no, I have a lot of things to to show. Oh, okay. These are parade in Berlin. These are uh, with minus ten degrees. These are parade in Ecuador and. Uh, um, all the time, uh, what we do, uh, oh, just one minute, it's horrible. What we do, okay, I understood. Uh, <laughs> and what we do, I don't think I, I like you. So, <laughs> no, 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 I have seconds, I have seconds, I can, se seven seconds, okay. Uh, half past ten, I, half past seven, half past seven, thank you, my sister saves my life. Half past seven is the performance. And, uh, uh, okay, um, well, you can learn a lot of things in the School of Narrative Dance, you can negotiate what you want to achieve, you negotiate also which part of the school you want to leave, the, the part of the formation, the part of the training with the dance. Yes, I'm finished. And, uh, uh, the entire experience is pretty emotional and it's also uh, the dignity of a lot of workers, uh, uh, activists, uh, uh, people that use for the first time their body to tell stories. And uh, I can tell you that I wanted, I'm crazy because making a parade in August in Venice with the such weather, it's just for crazy people, as I am, but instead of talk about that, 
I wanted to show you what is the, the School of Narrative Dance in Venice, which is completely different from the School of Narrative Dance in any other place. I finish. <laughs> Half past seven. Half past seven. Seven thirty. <laughs> so, two questions, Marinella. I have time for a question? Yes. So, the light. We the are not illiteracy. Beautiful. The illiteracy you mentioned in Europe, which is such an unknown factor. Um, you know, in Holland, it's like up to 22 percent illiteracy, and it's not only the immigrants. It's across the whole European it's, exactly. continent. Maybe. Tell us a little bit about your findings in terms of illiteracy. Okay, we and are... <laughs> the second question is your weapon, sense of humor. <laughs> Tell us more about well, that. Well, sense How of you humor use it. or because I talk so much, mm. so people say, okay, I'm exhausted, I, I work with you. So probably that's also another <laughs> way to involve people, no? Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't offer sex. Uh, sometimes I want it, but they don't want <laughs> I, I never, never offered money, but they come. So they found, they found a reason to come. And for me, the response in this is the inclusion. They feel included in the project. They feel that we build the culture from, and not from, actually, I can do more than this. <laughs> and, uh, but imagine that it's very high. I'm just an artist, so I don't know more than other people. I don't know more than a craft, than an, an literate, than um, an, uh, unemployed people, which very often are students or, or teachers of our school. We, are, we don't have a sponsor, we are not founded. Just, uh, um, and it keeps me very free to make a lot of things. My role is also to take step backs and step forward, uh, to leave also a space for people to manage their, their, in a cultural way their own memory, when they make a writing session, then when they read it together, then to translate this in dance. There are conflicts. I embrace that. I, I, don't, I don't want to decide. They want me and they ask me, Marinella, Marinella, who has the reason? It's your your, your problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that moment, I have the privilege to experience a lot of social structure, humanity, compassion, which is an amazing word, not very cool in the art world, but I would like to start to tell that. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Affection is cool. If you think that people are together, I'm, I'm, I'm stalling the time. If you think that people are together for hours and hours and days under the sun here in Venice making the rehearsal, something is linking them. They are working on the sense of community, even a temporary community. This community doesn't have money, but uh, when a museum offers us to, to invite us, they give us a small budget. I don't believe in artworks that cost a lot, even because uh, I have a, a lot of participants that really don't reach the end of the month, so I don't want to offend them making a... Uh, I don't need that. Actually, we need just to be in circle and work and share our skills. So if we need the tools, instead of buy or borrow, we try to uh, share the skills of the retired the craft Per, per man, or, the, or we call engineer, we ask the university to help us. So we try to use our energy and skills, uh, okay, and share together. So, but yes, we have a small budget that the institution offers, but the most important thing for me is that the institution offers a space. Anything you want to add for the illiteracy question? Or illiteracy? Illiteracy question. Illiteracy. <laughs> well, Come on! The answer we need. There are a lot of illiterate people. Also, I, I really don't like this man. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, uh, I like that uh, I have a very different strategy of communication. So very rarely I use, uh, depending on the community, but 
I like very popular uh, way of to communicate that the school is there and you can come and negotiate with us what we want, we want, we can do. So leaflet, megaphone on the street, knocking at the door of New York resident as I did <laughs> some times ago. So uh, um, uh, speeches, so uh, in a sh shopping center and so on. So we can uh, embrace a very wide range of people and illiterate people, illiterate people come very often. People feel a loser, like an unemployed, come very often. And it's a, a very important moment for them because they feel so proud of themselves because maybe their neighbors don't know that they are good making photo. And suddenly they, disco they discover that they are worthy for something. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.